In the heart of the African continent, there existed a kingdom of unparalleled beauty and prosperity. The kingdom of Ajaya was a verdant paradise where the golden rays of the sun kissed the emerald leaves of Asian trees. The hair was filled with the sweet scents of blooming flowers and the melodious songs of birds echoed through the valleys. Ajaya was a land where the rivers flowed with crystalline waters, their gentle murmurs, a constant symphony, and the fields yielded bountiful harvest year after year. The people of Ajaya were known for their warmth and hospitality. Villagers lived in harmony with nature, respecting the land that provided for them. The markets bustled with activity as merchants displayed vibrant textiles, intricate carvings, and an array of spices that filled the air with their exotic aromas. The kingdom was a mosaic of cultures, with traditions passed down through generations, each adding to the rich tapestry of Ajaya's heritage. At the heart of this flourishing kingdom was the royal palace, a magnificent structure adorned with intricate carvings and surrounded by lodge gardens. It was here that the princess of Awelewa, the jewel of Ajaya, resided. Awelewa was a vision of grace and beauty, her presence commanding admiration and respect. Her ebony skin glowed with a natural radiance, and her eyes, as deep and mysterious as the night sky, had the wisdom beyond her years. Princess Awelewa had always been the jewel of the kingdom of Ajaya. Her beauty was unparalleled, and her heart was as pure as the crystal rivers that flow through her land. Yet, beneath her regal exterior lay a profound sorrow. Despite her many virtues, Awelewa had been unable to be a child. The absence of an heir was a source of deep heartache, a void that seemed insurmountable. A marriage to Kilani Awosheka, a commoner, was a union born out of genuine affection, yet it brought no relief from her, from her despair. Kenny, who had once been a solace, had now become a reminder of her unfulfilled dreams. Their home, though modest, was filled with love and shared laughter. But this happiness was shattered when Kilani brought home a pregnant woman, Hawelewa's dearest friend, Titi, who struck Hawelewa like a bolt of lightning, leaving her devastated and broken. Her best friend, whom she had confided in and supported, was now a living testament to the very thing she yearned for, a child of her own. The weight of her sorrow was unbearable. Hawelewa's attic was not merely for the child she longed to have, but also for the betrayer she felt from Kilani, who had once been a rock. Her world seemed to crumble with each passing day. In her desperation, Awelewa turned to Prince Fakwiton, a revered spiritual leader known for his wisdom and guidance. Prince Fakwiton listened intently to Awelewa's plight, his eyes reflecting the depth of her anguish. After a moment of contemplation, he spoke with a voice that carried the weight of ancient knowledge. You must embark on a journey, princess. Travel to the distant village of Irakpada. We will find the answers you seek, but you must go alone. With her heavy heart and a glimmer of hope, Awelewa prepared for her journey. The path to Irakpada was filled with peril, but she was determined to find a way to fulfill her deepest wish. As she set out, she left behind the familiar comforts of her home and the shadows of her sorrow stepping into the unknown with her only faith to guide her. Her journey, Awelewa encountered an elderly woman named Iran, burdened with her heavy blow of firewood. The woman's appearance was humble. Her demeanor weary, but there was a kind warmth in her eyes. Awelewa, despite her own troubles, offered assistance, helping Iron with her load. Iron, grateful for Awelewa's kindness, revealed the family secret. My mother, Adedoni, was once cursed with childlessness. She had wronged a pregnant slave, and in her cruelty, she brought this curse upon herself. I had been blessed with the ability to help others, and now I will help you. Iron directed Awelewa to the secret river Awoyaya when she was to pray and seek the blessings of the river goddess, which renewed determination. Awelewa continued her journey to the river, carrying the hope that it might offer the answers she also desperately sought. At the river Awoyaya, Awelewa knelt and poured out her heart in prayer. The river, shimmering with an otherworldly light, seemed to respond to her pleas. The river goddess Arokidigba appeared before Awelewa and comforting. Your heart is pure and your intentions are noble, the goddess spoke. 
you shall be granted what you seek. But remember, the path to fulfillment is often filled with challenges. Words of encouragement, Awelewa felt a renewed sense of purpose. As she prepared to leave, she sensed that her journey was far from over. There were more trials to come, but her faith had been strengthened by the goddess's blessing. Meanwhile, in the village of Irapada, King Adedoyin lay gravely ill. The kingdom's prosperity was in jeopardy, and Priest Fabiyi, the royal advisor, revealed the troubling prophecy. The king's recovery is tied to the marriage of Princess Awelewa. This was a covenant made by his late father. If she does not arrive within seven days, the king will succumb to his illness. As the day ticked by, the kingdom awaited Awelewa's arrival with battered breath. The seventh day approached, and the situation became increasingly desperate. The people of Irapada, who had heard of the princess's journey and her role in their king's fate, prepared for the possibility of loss and uncertainty. At the last possible moment, Awelewa arrived in Irapada. Her presence was like a beacon of hope in the midst of despair. King Adedoyin, upon seeing her, experienced the miraculous recovery. The once ailing king regained his strength, and the kingdom rejoiced at the turn of events. Awelewa was welcomed with open arms by Queen Iwalewa and the villagers who celebrated the princess's arrival as a sign of renewed prosperity. The palace, now vibrant with activity, became a symbol of hope and revival. Awelewa's prayers had brought not only healing to the king, but also a wave of positive change throughout the land. The kingdom thrived under her influence, and the people embraced her as a guiding light. King Adedoyin married Awelewa as his third wife to the support of Queen Iwalewa and the village chiefs. However, not all was harmonious in the palace. King Adedoyin's second wife, known for her fairy temper and jealousy, could not tolerate Awelewa's rising prominence. Her resentment led to frequent clashes with Awelewa, and the tension escalated to a point where the queen and the king were forced to take action. The hot-tempered wife was eventually banished from the palace, and the peace was restored. And Awelewa's life took a new and joyful turn. She gave birth to triplets, two girls and a boy. The arrival of the triplets was celebrated with immense joy and gratitude. Queen Iwalewa, ever supportive, provided care and guidance. Kilani, now impoverished and struggling, heard of Awelewa's success and the birth of her children. Filled with remorse and longing for reconciliation, he approached the palace, seeking forgiveness. His appearance was far cry from the confident man he had once been and his plea was met with both sympathy and caution. Awelewa, having navigated her own pain and healing, faced Kilani with a mixture of resolve and compassion. You have caused me much sorrow, Kilani, but my focus is on my children and this kingdom. I will grant you forgiveness, but let us maintain a respectful distance. I will provide you with what you need to start anew. Kilani, deeply grateful, accepted Awelewa's terms. He was given provisions and a modest sum of money, and with a heavy heart, he left the palace knowing that his place was no longer by Awelewa's side, but in his own journey of redemption. As the years passed, Irapada continued to flourish. Awelewa's influence extended beyond the palace, reaching every corner of the kingdom. The fields yielded bountiful harvests. The markets thrived with trade and the arts and culture of Irapada experienced the renaissance. The kingdom's prosperity was a testament to Awelewa's leadership and the strength of his people. Queen Iwalewa, in her continued support, established schools and promoted cultural festivals that enriched the kingdom's heritage and education. Her efforts ensured that the values and traditions of Irapada were preserved and celebrated. Yet, as Irapada thrived, it faced new challenges. Eton, a noble from a neighboring kingdom, viewed Irapada's success with envy. He sought to undermine the kingdom's stability through covert actions and manipulation. His faction, driven by ambition and resentment, posed a significant threat. Awelewa and Queen Iwalewa, aware of the growing threat, devised strategies to counter its own schemes. Chief Olufemi, a trusted advisor, recommended strengthening the kingdom's defenses and increasing surveillance. Diplomatic missions were dispatched to reinforce alliances and ensure support from neighboring kingdoms. The looming threat necessitated a decisive response. 
Awelewa's leadership and the unity of Irapada's allies were crucial in addressing the challenge. The kingdom prepared for a potential confrontation fortified by its strategic preparations and the unwavering support of its people. The with Eton was a pivotal moment for Irapada. The battle was fierce, but Awelewa's strategic acumen and the loyalty of her forces played a decisive role. The kingdom's unity and strength overcame the threat, leading to a victory that ensured the continued prosperity and stability of Irapada. In the aftermath of the conflict, Awelewa and Queen Iwalewa focused on rebuilding and healing. The kingdom's infrastructure was restored and efforts were made to support those affected by the conflict. The victory brought a renewed sense of peace and stability, and the alliances forged during the battle remained strong. Awelewa's legacy was celebrated as a defining element of Irapada's history. Monuments were erected in her honor and festivals commemorated her achievements and the values she represented. Her leadership style became a model for future generations, embodying the principles of unity, justice and dedication. In the twilight of her reign, Awelewa reflected on her journey with a deep sense of fulfillment. Her experiences had shaped her into a leader of great wisdom and compassion. The kingdom she had nurtured and transformed stood as a testament to her enduring impact. One serene evening, Awelewa walked through the palace gardens where the beauty of the blooming flowers and the soothing sounds of nature provided a sense of tranquility. The gardens, a symbol of the flourishing kingdom, reflected the harmony and prosperity she had achieved. As the sun set over Irapada, casting a golden glow across the land, the people gathered to celebrate their achievements and honor the legacy of their revered leader. The festival was a tribute to the unity, strength, and vision that had guided Irapada through its challenges. Awelewa's story became a beacon of hope and inspiration, a testament to the power of perseverance and the importance of nurturing a legacy of positive change. A journey had transformed Irapada and left an indelible mark on its history. Awelewa will be remembered and cherished for generations, a symbol of hope and guiding light for all who sought to build a better future.